Hey guys, Dr. Zach here, Chief Entomologist here at Thanksgiving Point. Today, we are unboxing the undisputed champions of biodiversity, beetles. I am super excited about this. There are something like 400,000 species of beetles on the planet. They're huge. Some of them are tiny. In fact, the size difference between the biggest beetle and the smallest beetle is about the same as the size difference between the biggest mammal, the blue whale, and the smallest mammal, the, uh, oh, what's it called? The pygmy shrew. Woo! That means that the smallest beetle is actually smaller than some of the biggest single-celled organisms. That's bonkers. This is so exciting. So I lived in Costa Rica for years and I don't actually find these guys all the time out there. So it is so much fun to see these guys again. Check this out. <laughs> wow, this is a Hercules beetle. So this is a massive beetle, man. And this is a medium sized one. Sometimes their horns will be out to that big. Woo, look at that. So this horn here is actually attached to his face. This is a boy. And this horn here is attached to the back of the neck. So he can give you a pinch like that if he wants to. And he does it by moving his head up and down. And that's what actually kind of makes that lobster claw right there is just by moving the head up and down. So these giant beetles live in forests in Central and South America. And if you're down there seasonally, you can find these guys. Uh, they're not too uncommon, believe it or not. They're some of the heaviest flying insects on the planet. That's right, this bug can fly. So even though this huge beetle looks super scary, it's just a gentle little giant. In fact, its mouth parts are down here. They're teeny, teeny, tiny, and all they do is eat up rotting fruit. We feed ours bananas. They couldn't bite you if they wanted to. These are big, cool, charismatic beetles, totally harmless. One more really cool thing about this type of beetle is this is a medium-sized male, and they're actually kind of rare. They're more rare than the really, really big ones and the little, little bitty guys. And the reason is, is that the males fight for the females, right? And the really big ones, they fight and they win, and they win the hearts of the females. The little guys, they get into fights and they lose, but they survive the process because they just kind of bounce away. The medium-sized guys, they fight, and they lose and they die in the process. So these medium-sized males are actually less common than the big boys or the little, little guys. Let's put this one away and see what we've got next. Don't bite that. Hey. Oh, this is awesome. Man, these are huge. This is another giant of the Neotropics. This is one that we'll find in Central and South America. Look at that, dude. Holy cow, this is an elephant beetle. These are some of the biggest insects on the whole planet. Look at that guy, he's massive. So this is another scarab beetle, right? So this means it's a close relative of dung beetles, also that uh, Hercules beetle that we just saw. This guy looks a little bit different. That has that big horn on the front of the head. It doesn't have the one coming off of the neck right there. So they end up looking more like an elephant, which is where it gets the name. And of course, because of the size. One of the really cool things about elephant beetles is they are such a good example of what a beetle really is. If you look at the back right here, you'll see that stripe that goes down right there. That's because all beetles, they have four wings, but their front wings are like shields. And actually, that's actually where they get their scientific name, Coleoptera, which means shield wing. Their front two wings, like the front wings of a ladybug, they use as protection. And it's only their back two wings that spread out really wide and can fly. Believe it or not, this guy can fly too. So like the Hercules beetle, these guys are on a fruit diet. We actually feed them sugar cane or bananas. They have tiny little mouth parts, little biting, chewing mouth parts, and they just grind that stuff up and they gobble it up. So oftentimes people ask like, what does this bug do or what's it for? Well, think about this. This insect will spend the vast majority of its life down inside the soil, eating up roots and decaying vegetation as a grub. And it only spends, you know, a really relatively short period of time, you know, a matter of months or so as an adult, but it spends years as a grub down in the soil. So kind of like an earthworm, it's down in there, it's aerating the soil, it's gobbling up nutrients, turning it back into soil and helping plants grow. All right, we've got one more giant beetle to show you. I'm really excited about this one because those other two beetles, I've seen them before because I used to live in Costa Rica. This one is from tropical Asia and I've never seen one of these guys in real life. That is awesome. Whoa, he's mad. Look at this, dude. Wow, this is a giant stag beetle. Look at the size of those mandibles. Now, unlike the Hercules beetle, where it had those huge pinchers, it didn't have its mouth parts that would pinch you. It had a big horn on its nose and another one coming off of its neck. These are actually the mandibles here coming off this. And I've seen some other stag beetles and I've seen them actually like bite a pencil or a candy cane in half. It is bonkers how strong they are. I would not want to put my finger right there inside of the mouth parts of this guy. So these beetles actually have a pretty wide distribution throughout Asia. You can find them in Japan, in Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Laos. And uh, I would love to go there one day to find one of these guys. These are just magnificent, magnificent beetles. 
So like many other giant beetles, these beetles spend the majority of their life as grubs or as the larvae. And these guys have their grubs inside of rotting wood and they actually play a really critical part of the ecosystem in terms of recycling nutrients, taking dead wood and turning it back into soil that can be utilized by other species. So those last two beetles that we're looking at, the Hercules beetle and the elephant beetle, they have big horns coming out for the front. Those are a type of rhinoceros beetle. Stag beetles are actually, actually their mandibles that are really big and they're, uh, it's, they're really commonly confused. So if you see a beetle like this that has just massive, massive mandibles like this guy does, it's a stag beetle, dude, lay off. Whereas if you see a really big horn on the front of them, that's probably a rhinoceros beetle like the Hercules beetle or the elephant beetle. All right, guys, that does it for the beetles today. We could go on and on and on. There are literally hundreds of thousands of beetles out there. We have a few dozen of them. So if you want to see beetles, come check them out. We could seriously go on about beetles all day. If you like this video, please like the video and do me a favor, share it with your friends and subscribe if you want to see more awesome content like this in the future. And if you have a question, leave it down in the comments. We'll get to it or just show up in person because I cannot wait to nerd out with you and show you these bugs in person here at the Butterfly Biosphere. Thanks.